What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm really excited because in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys a Dino Morphia deck profile but not just any Dino Morphia deck profile it's actually a deck that I took to the sneak peek this last weekend and I went four and one with this deck. I had one loss to tier elements the rest of the day I went undefeated so four and one is what I finished. I was super happy with this deck. I'm super impressed with it. I had a lot of fun. Now if you guys do enjoy these kind of videos though make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on Spanko, deck profiles, combo videos, dual videos, all that good stuff. It's right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that. And just before we get into the video, I do want to say one final thing. At the end of the video, I have a little bit of a discussion of things that I would change after playing the deck. The deck is really powerful, but now that I've tested it, even though we still went four and one, there is some theory and there is some things that I may change. Again, that's going to be at the end of the video. So you guys can stay tuned for that. I don't want to keep you guys waiting for too much longer. Longer. so with that let's get into the deck profile all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk about the deck profile first and then we're going to have a little discussion later on in the video we're going to do the deck profile the side deck and the extra deck but at the end of the video stay tuned because i am going to talk about a little discussion about things that i would change in the deck especially after playing it now and just different theory especially in today's format with darkwing blast being released because this was supposed to be darkwing blast decks and so for that reason we're going to have a discussion at the end of the video but for now i'm just going to be showing you guys what i played and how it performed for me so let's start things off with the dinomorphia monsters three therese of course Yes as well as three Diplos. You have to be playing three of each of these. Diplos, honestly, is not a great card. However, you have to be playing it again. And funny enough, the burn for 500 actually did come up one time where I actually my opponent had 500 life points exactly, and I summoned Diplos for game, which was kind of nuts. So that was really funny, but I just don't think Diplos is the best card. However, you have to play three and three because you always want your fusion cards to resolve. And then we're playing the one miscellaneous. Of course, you have to be playing this. Why wouldn't you play this? You're playing dinosaurs and miscellaneous protects your dinosaurs. That's why you're playing the miscellaneous is just so powerful. And then for the last monster in the deck that's not a hand trap we are playing the one fallen albaz this is the branded build of the deck so for that reason we have to play the one albaz i didn't want to play two i just wanted to play one i think it made some lot of sense to just play one and it came up at the event where i just normal summoned this one time to super poly one of my opponent's runic extra deck monsters away in some matchups this comes up especially drawing it is not horrible because theresia is your only real good normal summon so if you don't get to theresia this is actually a pretty good normal summon going second as well and yeah that's why we played the one albaz and that's it for the monsters then we're playing a ton of hand traps and i'm going to explain the logic behind playing hand traps more so than playing Playing just a ton of traps and i'll explain it in just a second but we're playing 3dd crow 3 ash 3 nibiru as well as 3 infinite impermanence these are the best hand traps of the format but there's a reason i'm playing this lineup first things first with this lineup that i want to talk about is why we're playing hand traps over playing stuff like more traps now i know a lot of people when they build this deck they try to just fill it up with floodgates and a ton of cards like that however there's a problem with that in today's format. Evenly Mash is a very relevant card. Lightning Storm is a very relevant card. So for that reason, if you are just playing a ton of traps and you end your turn with like set four pass, you're very susceptible to losing to something like an Evenly Mash. You're very susceptible to losing something like a Lightning Storm or Harpy's Feather Duster, which is really, really bad, right? Because those are blowout cards against you in most situations. However, when you're playing the hand traps, you don't run into that problem. What ends up happening is you're really ending your turn with like two cards set. And then now if they're going to use their Evenly Mash, they're only going to Evenly you for one and then they're going to lose their battle phase which is just not that worth it to be honest or if they have the lightning storm again a lot of the traps you guys are going to see in this deck are chainable traps so it doesn't matter if they have the lightning storm in that kind of sense so instead of playing a ton of floodgates i'm playing the hand traps now another reason why the hand traps are really powerful is because you're not afraid of losing the die roll if you lose the die roll okay i'm playing 12 hand traps it doesn't matter that much this deck's biggest weakness is going second again the really cool thing about going second with this deck is you're playing the hand traps you're also playing the one fall on albaz so albaz is actually a good normal summon going second as well but yeah you're playing the 12 hand traps so you're not really worried and at the sneak peek i will say this dd crow is an mvp card this card was just so nuts i know i went in depth with this but it's important to understand like the logic of why lose to certain cards when you can just play around it right and playing the hand traps just plays around it then for the spells we are playing the three fossil dig of course all your monsters are dinos so you're gonna get to search and it's not once per turn it's kind of crazy one prosperity three branded fusion and one called by the grave now i know you guys are gonna be like spanko why are you playing one prosperity i actually only have the one prosperity so that's why i only played the one but uh yeah you definitely want to play more than one if you have more than one if you have three just definitely play three there's no reason to not play three i only had the one so i only played the one but actually funny enough like you know it was fine even without the prosperity the deck is playable so if you guys don't have prosperity can't afford prosperity it's fine because uh yeah the deck's definitely very playable without the prosperity prosperity of course is a very powerful card but yeah you don't need it and these are pretty standard i don't think this needs much explaining then for the traps of course we're maxing out on the fusion traps these are the most important trap cards to play in the deck and this is what i was talking about where these are very chainable traps so let's say you end your turn with like a domain or a frenzy set and your opponent has back row hate it doesn't matter you just chain them right so chainable traps are always the best traps to have that's why we're playing the three and three then we're playing two brute 
one sonic and one alert all right so these i'm going to explain just a little bit alert is really cool because it's recursion or also summons rex from back for you sonic was mvp though okay so there was one game and again this is why you don't want to lose to these kind of cards but there was one game where i opened like four traps i didn't even open any hand traps i just opened four traps and i had sonic and then i had my diplo on the field so i literally passed my turn with diplo and four traps but one of them was sonic and then my opponent had evenly matched and i go sonic to negate it so that's just how powerful sonic can be and that's why i really like this card this card was mvp in so many situations brute's also a really good card brute is really nice because you pay half your life points again which is cool but you also destroy a dinomorphia card on your field and what's really cool about the dinomorphia is, is they float so if you use this to destroy your theresia or your rex drum or it doesn't matter what it is you get to special summon another one from your grave and this is actually how i got to special summon the diplo to beat my opponent and burn him for 500 so that's why i think you need to be playing these brute is actually just the best one that's why you're playing two outside of the fusions sonic also has a really cool effect where if it's in the graveyard you can banish it and you take zero battle damage and battle damage does kind of hurt in this deck especially when you're putting your life points to 2000 or 1000 so being able to take zero battle damage with this card is nuts and then we are playing three trap trick of course because it acts as any of the fusions traps it also acts as brute if you needed to act as brute and then we're playing one card that i thought was super techy super spicy but i really liked it was fair flames so why is this nuts because you're always at a minimum put Putting yourself to 2k life points sometimes 1k life points if you're at 1k life points and your opponent has like three monsters on board you flip ferret flames and it just shuffles it back into the deck also it does not affect the monsters it affects the player so that's a really crazy thing about ferret flames it just wipes entire board so that's why i really liked it it's a trap trickable card that's why we only played two this card is so nuts and i just i really love this card don't get me wrong i don't think i would swap this card out it's just too good the extra deck luckily enough does not need a lot of explanation we are playing the three rexstrom of course rexstrom is your boss monster of the deck if you put this guy up on the field every time i did my opponent didn't have an answer to this and it was nuts then we're playing the three catrogena catrogena is a really powerful card one of the stealth bergia this card is really good i actually think i should play two of this card now, after playing this event this card is just really good fodder for your frenzy so that's why we're playing just the one but we should be playing on the two i'm gonna be real and then we're playing three mirror jade of course because you're playing the brandon package two lubelion two albion the reason you're playing two and two with three mirror jade is because most of the time with prosperity you're just getting rid of these extra cards here so that's why you're kind of maxing out on these names they're not maxing out but playing a lot of these names and then lastly we are playing the one evolzar dolka dolka was mvb today every time i made this i won this card is just so nuts you definitely need to be playing it so for the side deck here, we are just playing blowout cards, and I'm going to explain it just a little bit. We're playing the one Harpies, the three Lightning Storm, and the three Evenly Match. These cards are to go second. Every time you go second, you really want to side these in, because they're really good into most matchups, or any matchup, really. So that's why every time I went second at the event, I literally just sided all seven of these in, in any situation, especially because I ended up playing decks that do play a decent amount of back row, so the high Harpies especially was good. But even if you're playing decks that don't play back row, you just don't play the Harpies, but Lightning Storm and Evenly are just way too powerful in today's format. So again, more cards just to go second because again you do struggle going second the hand traps are really nice but you need more cards to go second and then going first i literally sided this and this is not even a joke every time i was going into games two and games three i sided in three goes in match three solemn judgment every single game at the event i sided in all of these six because people would side in back row hate against me so solemn judgment of course protects you against evenly match lightning storm just any back row hate judgment is really good in that sense it's also really always live because it just pays half your life points you're never going to lose with judgment on like strike goes in match just so good into every single match of this format and i always sided it going first this is not even a joke every game two and game three if i lost game one or i lost game two and i knew i wanted to go first always sided these in so it was nuts and then lastly we were playing two dimensional barrier barrier is a really good card here in the tier limit matchup that's why i decided to play it it's trap trickable that's why we're only playing the two i think this card is really really powerful it didn't really come up for me today unfortunately as much as i wanted it to but it is still a really really good card i think you should be playing it still so that's it for the side deck i think it's pretty typical the only thing is i want to say is like these cards are just way too important going first and these cards are just way too important going second so just before we end the profile i do want to have a little discussion about the deck although i did go four and one i really like this deck i think this deck is very powerful there are some things that i'd want to change and specifically i would want to take out the branded package now i'll explain to you why most of the games i won when i did win i didn't see the branded package at all so it was funny because i sided it out a lot and then i kind of realized if i'm siding this out a lot I just, it, this takes up too much extra deck space. It just honestly just takes up way too much extra deck space. That's why I want to actually just take it out of the deck completely. But here's what I want to talk about why. So the thing is with this deck is Branded Fusion is really good if you resolve it, right? But a lot of time it is Ash Bait, which is nice because that means your Frenzy and stuff is most likely to go through because if your opponent has an Ash in hand and they use it on the Branded Fusion, then they're probably not going to have a second one for your Frenzy, which is nice. However, I will say this, okay? The Branded Fusion is ever only going to resolve once. If you make your Lubelian, especially if you're playing Prosperity, right? Because you're going to be getting rid of like one or one of these names. So the thing is, 
these are only really ever going to resolve it once. And you guys might be arguing, but Lubelion shuffles itself back and Albaz. The thing is, a lot of people will just wait to negate the Lubelion. And then now you have an Albaz in the graveyard that doesn't do anything and a Lubelion on the field that doesn't do anything. And so it kind of sucked. The logic behind this engine was essentially because you put yourself at such low life points, you never really want to go into time. What you want to do instead is you really want to be able to just OTK your opponent or push for a lot of damage. And this is essentially how you did it, right? But post Darkwing Blast, I'll be honest with you, I would just take this out completely. And there's two options I'm going to give you guys. One, because we're playing 43 cards, you guys can actually just take these out completely. That'll put you at 39. And then you can put two more prosperities in and you're good to go. But I would actually recommend playing either one of these two options. One, take out these four and put in three rivalry or three goes and match in the main deck because goes and match or rivalry are just way too broken to not play. That's why I think I would just take these out and just play these broken rivalry goes in like trap cards that are just going to make your opponent not be able to play the game. But the other option, this is option number two, is actually just take these out and play three to four bestial monsters. They're just so powerful for a lot of reasons. One of the main reasons being that the problem that I talked about earlier was that because you put yourself at such low life points, you want to be able to do damage and have bodies on board. Well, the really cool thing about the bestial monsters is these are big bodies for you. They're 2,500 attack. So you can actually put more damage on the board just with these monsters, but they're also hand traps. Like that's a really cool thing about the bestial monsters is that if you're going against tier or a lot of different decks, tier is probably the best deck of the format. If you're going against tier or a lot of decks that use dark or light monsters, this is not only just a big body for you, it's also a hand trap. And that's what's really, really powerful about the bestial engine, honestly, more so than the branded engine overall. So if you guys wanted to swap these out, you guys can honestly just play the bestial stuff because nothing here is like locking you into anything. So you just get a free hand trap, free body on the board that's going to put a lot of pressure on your opponent. But another reason, and this is just outside of the fact that you would rather play more broken cards, is that you want more space in your extra deck. Like, honestly, this is taking up, what, four, seven slots? Like, seven slots in your extra deck that are just not that relevant, especially if you're going to bring up Brandon Fusion just one time. Honestly, I would rather play, like, a Logia in here. Just more techie cards that you can use in different situations versus this package, which is kind of just stuck. Now, if you wanted to play this package, I think I would change it up to play at least one Titanic Clad because you can send a Nibiru off of your brand infusion for Titanoclad and then Titanoclad becomes a big body and that can help you push for a game if you really wanted to play this package. But I think you could just cut this package altogether. It's just not that great, honestly. It's just, I would rather have more space in the extra deck for more different cards against different matchups. Even something like Dweller is just so powerful, right? So I'm just saying, put the Bistial stuff in, put some Floodgates in, take these out. I don't think you need them. Just too many cards in the extra deck, too many resources that you can just use in a better way, honestly. So yeah, I would just swap these out. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That was my four in one Dinomorphia deck profile at sneak peek that even though I lost my very first round, I went four and oh afterwards. So this deck is very powerful. It's very strong. I really think you guys should try it out for yourselves and also try out the changes that I suggested just to see how it plays out for you. So thank you guys all for watching. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on Spanko. Deck profiles, dual videos, combo videos, all that good stuff. It's right here on the channel. So make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned for more. Thank you guys. I appreciate every single one of you with that. Thank you. So I don't know. Peace.